Today, we're going to take a look at the Cluster API on Equinix Metal. The Cluster API is an official Kubernetes sub-project. It exists to allow you to use Kubernetes to get more Kubernetes. What does that mean? It means we can use the Kubernetes resource model, that is, custom resources and YAML applied to a Kubernetes cluster, with a controller that runs in a Kubernetes cluster that gives you more Kubernetes clusters. <laughs> and while this may sound a little bit weird, strange, wonderful, depending on which angle you want to look at it from, it's actually really cool because it allows you to have declarative, reconciled, automated cluster upgrades, remediation, and a whole lot more. Let's dive into some of the vocabulary and terms that we are going to need to understand how the cluster API works. So as we said, you need Kubernetes to get Kubernetes. When we're working with multiple clusters with Cluster API, the first and existing Kubernetes cluster we're going to refer to as a management cluster. Now, how you choose to provision this is up to you. In a video later in a series, we'll take a look at using CAPI to provision that management cluster by moving that initial state into the cluster that it provisions. But for today's demo, we're only going to use a local kind cluster as the management cluster. But this is not something you would do in production. Clusters provisioned by the cluster API, we're going to call workload clusters. Workload clusters have their life cycle managed by the management cluster. Simple. In order to use cluster API to provision clusters, we need an infrastructure provider. That is, CAPI needs to know how to provision hardware for any managed cluster. Lastly, the cluster API, as we explore, you'll hear terms like machine, machine set, and machine deployment. A machine can be thought of as a bare metal server, which eventually becomes a node when it's been bootstrapped. A machine deployment is a definition for how you want to spin up more machines, node groups. And a machine set is something that the cluster API uses when handling upgrades. It has to be able to spin up a new machine set and then moves everything across, shutting down the old ones. It does this because the cluster API considers nodes and machines to be pretty much immutable. That means we roll out new machines every time we have a Kubernetes upgrade. Let's provision a Kubernetes cluster. To get started, you need to have the cluster control command available. Like so. Now, if you don't have this, which I guess is quite likely, you'll need to pop open Kubernetes 6 slash cluster API on GitHub. From here, you can go to the releases page and get the latest release, maybe not the RCs, <laughs> and grab the binary for your machine. Once you have this, you can then run the init command, specifying the infrastructure provider that you want to use. Now for legacy reasons, the cluster API infrastructure provider for Equinix Metal is still called Packet. Now that that's running, it's installing Cert Manager and the other bootstrap components into our Kubernetes cluster that make it possible for the cluster API controllers to run successfully. Now, it kindly gives us a command that we can run to generate the manifest to provision our first cluster API cluster. We can say that we want Kubernetes version 130.0 and we can give our cluster a name, like demo. Now, when we run this, it is going to fail. And that's just because the cluster control command isn't aware that you need to set a whole bunch of environment variables to successfully generate the manifest required for your provider. Or at least it could be, but it's not checking my environment variables. Either way, we got to set some environment variables. So let's do that now. All we're going to do is copy this error message and head over to VS Code. Here I'm using an envrc file. This just allows us to inject environment variables whenever we enter this directory. We can delete everything around the environment variables that we need. 
and start to set them up to be set. Okay, so control plane node type. For this, we'll use a C3 medium x86. The metro we're going to use is Amsterdam. We'll get the project ID in a moment and the SSH key. And the worker node type will also make our C3 medium x86. I'm just using those because they're pretty reliable boxes that are always in good supply. So let's head over to the Equinix console and grab our project ID. You can find us by going to project settings and hitting copy. And for SSH keys, all you need is the name of the SSH key under your personal account, which for me is one password. Like so. Now I can go back to my terminal and run dirtenv allow to accept my changes and reload my environment. Now if we run the generate command again, it gives us a whole bunch of YAML. Now the instructions from cluster API docs do suggest throwing this straight to kubectl apply, but instead we want to understand it. So let's pop this open in VS Code. Now, there is a lot of YAML here, 250 lines to be specific. So we're not going to go through it line by line, but we do want to have an understanding of what the YAML tells Cluster API to do and when and where you may wish to make modifications. Now, the first thing that we have up in this file is the cube admin config template. This is responsible for telling Cluster API how to provision our bare metal machines and prepare them to run a Kubernetes control plane or kubelet. So here you'll see the commands that have to be run prior to kube admin init being run, which is the bootstrapping process for provisioning in your cluster with kube admin. And that just means configuring things so that container D can run successfully as a CRI and maybe even anything that you need to tweak for a proper CNI installation. We can also see here that it's just setting up the repositories so that Kubernetes can be installed through apt. Now, let's move down and we'll see that we have our cluster resource. This specifies the CIDR blocks to use for pods and services, as well as references to the control plane and infrastructure resources that are also going to be created. We have our machine deployment, which works much like a Kubernetes deployment except instead of managing replica sets and pods, is managing machine sets and machines. Again, it's important to remember that Cluster API does treat all of these nodes as immutable. Once they're provisioned, it won't make any changes. That means if you want to upgrade your cluster, you have to be prepared for all of your machines to be shut down and new ones to be spun up. Not necessarily in that order. We then have our kube admin control plane our packet cluster, machine templates, and we're done. So what would you need to change here? Well, you're welcome to change the machine type. You could update the operating system to Ubuntu 22 instead of 20. Bear in mind that you will have to update your pre cube admin commands to make sure that a cluster can be successfully provisioned. The gotcha there is that if you do upgrade to Ubuntu 22, you will have to reconfigure the C group driver to work correctly with systemd. This kube admin conflict template is also a good place to throw in any global services that you may need on all of your nodes that you don't want to deploy to Kubernetes. Perhaps you have some sort of monitoring tool or remote access tool like Teleport that you need available on all of your machines. Once you've been through that and you're happy with the template, you can save it to use it as many times as you want. But what we're going to do now is apply this to our management cluster. Like so. So I've left that running for more than enough time for our cluster to be healthy. In fact, I went for lunch. So let's see where we're at. We can run 
kube control. Again, we're using the Kubernetes resource model with cluster API. So everything is kube control. We can see get clusters, and we'll see that our demo cluster has been provisioned now for 90 minutes. We can run get machine sets and machines. You can see here we have our demo machine set and a provisioned machine deployed on Equinix Metal. So that's looking pretty good. We also requested version 130 of the cluster and we got Kubernetes 130. So now we want to interact or use our cluster because what good is it if we can't use kube control against our new cluster? For this, we can run cluster, cluster control get kubeconfig for the demo cluster. And this returns our kubeconfig. But of course, we need to write that to a file. So let's use kube control, this time specifying a custom kubeconfig where we ask for all pods. And there we have it. We have a kube system namespace running the control plane, attempting to run core DNS and provisioned with the Equinix Metal Cloud Provider. Now, core DNS is in a pending state because one, we didn't actually specify that we wanted any worker nodes, so we would have to remove the kube control plane taint, easily done, or add more machines. But also we have no CNI. This is not something that cluster API is opinionated on and provisions one for you. You have to do that yourself. So the next step would be to deploy a CNI to our cluster. But we want to be able to do that in an automatic way and a declarative way. I don't want to run Cilium install from my machine. So join us for the next video as we take a look at how to bootstrap a workload cluster with CAPI using CAPI primitives and the Kubernetes resource model. We'll see you next time.